Hey guys, check out this amazing video of what looks like Bigfoot in the woods here in the United States, located in the state of Oklahoma. Now the video went viral all over social media yesterday, 24 hours ago. No one knows what this creature is. Everyone's saying that it's a very humongous creature, at least eight to nine feet tall. Other people in the local area have claimed to seen this creature. The cameraman actually recording this used his cell phone to record Bigfoot before the creature looked his way. And then the guy said he started running out of fear from the animal. But this is the footage he got before he started running away from Bigfoot. Since then, the video is all over the internet and people are literally saying that this could possibly be real Bigfoot sighting. What do you guys think? Comment below. FEMA's here. You know what FEMA just told us? We can't get you a phone. I have no ID. I have no way to pay for food. He has no way to get gas. We're stuck. So we have to sleep in a car that's leaking with the same clothes we've had on since the... And it was a 30-foot wall of water just pushing through to Lake Lure, all the way down. My house washed away. I had a, I had a cat, I had a, two geckos. And I lost it all. It was like by a miracle that we made it. I started to call 911, I could not get through. I called again and I was able to get through. And I said, the water's coming in our house and they said, get to higher ground. And I was like, okay, we're going in the attic. Uh, we're overwhelmed with calls right now. That's all we can tell you to do. Your adrenaline something is like this is you're you're saving your life right now. You're doing it. You know what's crazy is that I've been hearing rumors that FEMA's been turning those people down, man. And when people that like own their own like helicopters and stuff go in and try to rescue people, they tell them not to. Y'all, I don't know what's going on down there, but now I'm starting to see that it might all be planned. Uh oh, no fall prize winning economist here to tell us how great the economy is. I certainly wonder how the residents of Asheville, North Carolina must be feeling right now with no access to power or water or communication with the outside world. I wonder how enthusiastic they are about the economy right now. I wonder how enthusiastic the residents of the South Bronx must be feeling about the economy. Hey, maybe North Carolina should rename itself Israel so it'll get $20 billion in aid. Or maybe Ukraine so it can get $300 billion in aid. Maybe the South Bronx should do the same thing. I mean, I'm sure the economy is great for smug liberals like yourself who make $5 million and are worth $5 million. I'm sure the economy must be great for all you smug journalists, economists. All of you must be having a great time with the economy when most people can't even pay for basic necessities. For people who are getting evicted because they can't pay their rent. Because over in the South Bronx, just a few miles away from here, there are portions of buildings that are literally collapsing. And I'm supposed to give a shit about the stock market. You want to know why the presidential election is tied right now? Because our money is being sent to Israel and Ukraine so that they can continue to bomb innocent women and children. You think that's a great economy? I'm sure Israel, with their free health care, is having a great time with American taxpayer money. Hey, are you going to talk about the fact that we should be in war with Iran in a few days? Or do we need to focus on the S&P 500? Is that what actually matters? Off the S&P 500, when most people may not even be alive here in a few days, just because we're on the verge of nuclear war. Hey, listen to me, Mr. Crutchman. Your degree is worthless. You might as well use it as paperweight, because it means nothing. I hope you enjoy the dead children that the economy is powering. Our economy is definitely very powerful right now. All that stock market money goes to the military complex so that more innocent women and children are dead. 
and fought law with the New York Times, the liberal apologist for war and genocide. You all fucking suck. People need to wake up right now, and we need to have peace. We can work with China. We can work with Russia. We don't need to start war with Iran. He said his piece. But the thing about that is, no matter how much you speak about it, it ain't gonna change anything. Because the strange thing was is that he was the only one speaking. Probably a bunch of people feel like that, but nobody has the balls to say and do what he did. He's announced that the United States will provide more than one and a half billion dollars to address Ukraine's humanitarian and energy needs. Uh, and the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750. A whole 750 But they can send $20 billion to an outside country. Oh, my God. What's happening? Man? I don't even know anymore. We know what's going on. But what can we do to fix it? Because you got... You got, it's a split, it's a split economy. You got some people believing in this bull crap. Then you got others that want to stand up and do something about it. And, and people, and when you preach about it or you, you, you speak about it, then you have people pushing against you. Bro, we are so fucked. Do you realize that we literally all live in the same country, but we're separated by red and blue. Do y'all even see that? Do you see that there is no win in this? Because as long as people like them have support, and as long as people like uh, Trump have support, there's always a divide. I want to express condolences to all the families, to all the families whose loved ones have died or are missing. Matter of fact, uh, it's almost equally as bad and missing, not knowing whether or not your brother, sister, husband, wife, son, daughter are alive. And uh, we all know that a lot of us have experienced that and we understand what you're going through. And, uh, and to the survivors, I want you to know the administration is gonna be there and we just talked about this till we finish the job. It's gonna take a hell of a long time and a serious amount of assets. I literally have nothing to say. Members that are still rising the danger is still occurring for a lot of people. And by the way, as as the uh, FEMA can tell you, they had prepositioned an awful lot of material, an awful lot of material throughout that area from the bend all the way up into Tennessee. And so the idea that we weren't prepared, the question is, no one knew exactly how devastating it would be. We knew it would be significant, and we've got a lot already in place, but there's more. But here's the point. I'm going to be asking the American people to continue to help fund the needs of these people. It's not going to be one hit and it's over. It's going to take a hell of a long time. It's going to cost a hell of a lot of money. But this is the United States of America. We've got to do it. Look how fast someone can get in office and destroy a country. Look how fast. So let me get this straight. Donald Trump who is not the president of the United States of America, launches a GoFundMe page to help Hurricane Helene victims raise more than $1 million. And the rhetoric from the other side says, we do not have any extra additional funding to help or save or raise for the victims of this hurricane that has absolutely decimated our families of the United States of America. Uh, but yet we can send $8 billion over to Ukraine and hundreds of millions of dollars to fund Taiwan. And that is a threat to our democracy. And that is the man that doesn't give a shit about the American people. And that's the one that we shouldn't call our president and the one that stands by our sides to make sure that our families are safe and sound. What I want you to do is send in your comments. I want you to send in your comments. How does it feel 
that hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of your tax paying dollars are getting funneled overseas. But yet we have no extra money for the people down south that desperately need our help. Yeah, I still have nothing to say, man. Well, it just announced that FEMA is going to be providing $750 to the victims of Hurricane Helene. She says that this money can be used for, quote, immediate needs and assistance for home repairs, insurance, deductibles, and hotel stays. When people see how much migrants are getting paid in sanctuary cities per month compared to the American taxpayers who just had their complete lives destroyed by Hurricane Helene, it feels like a complete ripoff. In New York, migrants are getting $1,400 a month in SNAP benefits. In Los Angeles, $1,000 per month. In Chicago, they're getting many benefits. And I know that a lot of this money is state and city funded, but FEMA's had something to do with it as well. Look at this. In 2023 and 2024, the direct funding for migrants through FEMA was over $1.4 billion. That's when you add up the costs that they've spent on the Shelter and Services Program, the SSP, and the Emergency Food and Shelter Program, the EFSP-H. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victims of Hurricane Helene, and my question to you is, should the federal government be doing more? As always, I want to hear what you think about all of this down below it almost is as if they have literally disowned the american people and they moved the immigrants in because they know the immigrants are going to we know for a fact we already know these things work for less they're not going to question anything they're not going to fight back for anything so it's like that's what they want us to be they want us to shut up be obedient and we'll get everything that we want what the what is the what is democracy anyway i mean i know the literal meaning of it but what is democracy what does it mean because it literally means nothing anymore i don't even care for the word i don't even want to call it our de democracy you can call it your democracy but at this point democracy has failed all of us and you can keep thinking that it hasn't. And you can keep thinking that when Trump get in there, he won't have the fight of his freaking life when he get in there to make these changes. Because it may be the Harris and Biden administration, but you gotta think about the House and the Senate. It's a lot of them that are, are, are okay with this or okaying this stuff. And that's what Trump is going to be up against. <laughs> and we're just electing any old body in our local elections. But I digress. Well, well, well. Guess who just got endorsed by the Heritage Foundation? Your girl Kamala Harris, okay? Now keep in mind, for the longest, everybody had been running around talking about Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. He's going to initiate Project 2025 and the whole nine, okay? But guess who got the endorsement from them? Kamala Harris. Now, I'm not sure if you guys do your research or not, but if you go back and do your research, you will find out that when Biden stepped down as president of the United States, they are the ones who orchestrated all of this. They are the ones who put all this stuff into place to make sure things ran as smoothly as they wanted it to go. I also believe that they are the ones who wanted Kamala Harris in place because they knew that she was going to be the one who would actually initiate Project 2025. They was just telling you guys that Donald Trump was going to do it so you could look that way while she was doing whatever she had to do over this way, okay? Now, the question of the day is this. Since everybody was saying they're not voting for Donald Trump because he was initiating Project 2025, but this woman over here just recently got the endorsement, who are you voting for now? Are you still voting for Kamala Harris or no? Nah? Turns out that's a fact she did. I'll post the, I'll post the uh, article somewhere here on the screen. I don't know. But you'll see it. It's not a lie. Oh, we getting played with in our faces, y'all. Even to the Democrats out there, y'all getting played with. Wake up, man. Who remembers back when April, when I was talking about a celebrity death that faked their death, would reveal themselves in October? 
How many of you guys are seeing that Tupac is going to testify against Diddy? Y'all remember that? A lot of y'all been following me for a while. Y'all remember that? When I showed y'all that podcast showing all these predictions? And one of them, one of the predictions was that a celebrity who faked their death would reveal themselves in October. And we're in October. And you're seeing all this Tupac shit. Talk about Machiavelli. I've been quiet for too long. Machiavelli's return. We live in the Matrix. Where are we? Huge problem. Where's our moon? I've been out here since the 29th with my telescope, waiting to see the second moon. But to my surprise, not only did I not see the second moon, I can't see our regular moon. I'm in upstate New York. I mean, it's sunny out. It's, the sky's great. But come nightfall, it's gonna get all cloudy and I'm not able to see the moon even with my telescope. Have you seen the moon where you're at? I don't know where you're at. Like, have you seen our moon? Why is the moon not visible? I made a video about this on my other account. And from all over the world, people are saying that they have not seen the moon. I was so surprised. I mean, I thought a few people like me weren't able to see it. And I was hoping that other people had seen it so I could see them. No one has seen the moon. Like this is some Despicable Me cartoon. You remember the first cartoon where Despicable Me, they were, they were stealing the moon? Who stole the freaking moon? Where is our moon? Since the 29th, no one has seen the moon. They are directly interrupting our ability to conduct missions and operations. Um, and, and I'm not gonna disparage anybody because we are trying to work within uh, partner relationships, both government and non-government entities within state and federal and county. Um, you know, we, I went to put a couple of people into a hotel last night and I, they have a security guard at the hotel. They said, oh, we're so sorry. The entire hotel has been booked for federal employees. And I was like, no, no I, I have people that would just pull out of the mountain that, that are living down the hills and there's not a place for me to put them because we have federal employees that are staying in the hotel. But this white car looks like I smell like foot and death right now, as does every single person on our team. Not a single one of us slept. We got done maybe at three o'clock, the moment the sun was up, we could fly helicopters again. We were back in the air. We have not stopped. And I was like on, on the fence about trying to get on this program or not. I want people to understand how incredible this organization is, Save Our Allies, and all the work that all of these volunteers are doing. But people, this is biblical level devastation. This is apocalyptic, the things that we see out there. You know, it's kind of like a, we've seen this before with uh, Hurricane Katrina and all of those people that lost their lives during that time and how they weren't going in and rescuing everybody. A lot of people got out of that city themselves without the help of any kind of government officials. It, it, it was, That was a wild year. And it's kind of like we're seeing it again. Sean this is the gravest betrayal of American citizens this country has ever seen. The reason why those Americans in North Carolina, those mothers, those fathers, those precious little children, were left to die, were left on rooftops begging, begging their government for help that never came, is because Kamala Harris turned FEMA into an illegal alien resettlement agency. Its manpower, its dollars, its resources, its mental energy was spent over the last four years learning how to do one thing, how to get illegal aliens from outside the country into your town. And so when disaster struck, they were not ready, they were not prepared, they were not capable, and they did not care. And our fellow citizens, including babies, children, young kids, were left to suffer and drown. They did not scramble the helicopters. They did not scramble the military. They did not send needed assistance. But if those children had been living in a foreign country, they've been living in Haiti, or they've been living in Venezuela, why then Kamala Harris would have sent in help immediately. A betrayal like we've never seen before, Sean. This is infuriating. It's too late. I mean, they took too long. They, uh, they had, it took him five days to get here. And I mean, it took five days for Biden to come here and he didn't think we were worth coming down to see 
him us himself he had to fly over on his way to raleigh um it's it's disgraceful i mean they keep saying we the people no there is no we the people it's them versus us so they're not for us it's all about them they tell us what we need instead of just co- instead of listening to us it's what it is it ain't no democracy so people can stop saying our democracy because it don't exist it's their democracy and we are a threat to their democracy what you're looking at is the image of two Asheville fire chiefs who were actually telling a helicopter pilot to leave his co-pilot son behind and not save anybody up in the mountains I'm going to show you the video of him basically explaining and breaking down exactly what these individuals did. And then you can make your own assumption. Because as far as I'm concerned, I've seen this before. We've seen this before in Haiti. We've seen this before in Louisiana. We've seen this multiple times when they redirect hurricanes to places where they either want resources or influence. And then FEMA comes in, which is also down there. And next thing you know, people end up missing and understand something very very simple these people do not want those people alive think about it those people were actually on a mountain that's a mountainous area if you're on a mountainous area and you're in an area where hurricanes hit all the time they hit all the time right they always get a little hurricane over there right what happens go in the house you board it up da, 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 you find it next morning right right But this one time, they made it so that that hurricane was supposed to take these people out. And I'm pretty sure they are going to send people to take these people out and get rid of them. And then they're going to go, oh, the death toll is so high and the waves must have, you know, they're going to put, they're going to hire their people. They own the network. They're going to hire their people. She's going to come out there and she's going to, they're going to use the voice. I'm going to do it for you right now. Well, folks, right now I'm out here in Asheville and it is tragic. It is tragic. The word is the death toll has now went up to 150. It seems like bodies were dragged out to sea and they were whole time. These people up in the mountains waiting to be saved. And they sent people out there to finish off the job. Now you want to say, oh, why would they do that? Stop being naive. Do you think these people don't know what happened to their land? Do you think these people are stupid and they don't have the internet? They can't figure it out? Do you think they're not going to want lawsuits? Do you think they're not going to want to rebuild? Yes, they are. But if there's nobody to file lawsuits, nobody to rebuild, (laughs) I guess we'll start mining for lithium. Watch this video. His response was, there's so many messages, I don't think we can't not go help. Sidham and his son were headed up to Black Mountain. Flight tracking shows no flight restrictions in place Saturday or Sunday morning when Sidham flew through the Lake Lure Gap. But that was all about to change. The Sidham spotted an older couple waiting for help, then landed in what's left of their driveway. I want you to uh, let me get in. You step out. And go out, help her in, put her bag in the back, get her strapped in. I'm going to take her down, fill back, I'll take him, I'll fill back, and then I'll get you, okay? I originally left my son, co-pilot, on the side of the mountain. It was, it, it was kind of unstable, so I didn't want to put more weight in the helicopter to lift back off. So I left my son with the other victim, and, and I was just going to take one person down at the time. And, and you could hear me in the video talking through with the victims and with my son, what we're going to do. Three minutes away, Sidham spotted a group of rescuers just down the river. He landed and found someone in charge. My, uh, my background experience, law enforcement, uh, I didn't. Pilot, he immediately started uh, helping with coordination. He, he gave me radio frequencies to coordinate with them on, um, set up a landing area for me to come back with the uh, other victim. And in the uh, middle of the whole conversation and, and then blocking the road off, I was greeted by the uh, 
at that time I didn't know, but Lake Lure fire chief or assistant chief maybe, and he shut down the whole operation. So at, at that point there was, I felt like the conversation wasn't going any further. And again, he asked me to leave and, and, and I said, hey, I have no problem getting out of your area. If that's what you want us to do, we'll, we'll leave, no issue. At that point I asked him, you know, what was the reason I had to leave them there? And, and he said, again, you're interfering with my operation. I, I just need you to get out of the area. I said, sir. Makes me wonder what was his operation because it clearly wasn't saving them people. We dealing with some evil forces and North Carolina and, uh, and, and, and up in Tennessee, they feeling it the worst. I, I don't know where you were trained at, but I know how my training is and I'm not gonna leave personnel behind. I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. He said, if you turn around and go back up the mountain, you're gonna be arrested. I said, well, sir, I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. And he said, I'm, I'm letting you know. And at that point he waited for two law enforcement officers to come over and told me that again, if I go back up the mountain, I would be arrested. He flew the three minute trip back, picked up his son and left the woman's husband behind. I'm sure he was flooded with emotion. He had to leave a man behind because they didn't want him to get him. What the heck is going on? And trying to rescue other people. And I just felt that it was best at the time to leave. So I did follow his instructions and I had a conversation with the female victim before I left, apologized and explained. And she, she was standing there. She heard the whole conversation and surprised, very upset. The husband. Do you know how worrisome the husband and the wife had to be to be separated during this time? Bro. That, that had to be a nightmare for them, man. As I was leaving off of the side of the mountain at that point, separated from his wife, he was he was upset. I can only imagine. Sidham and his nearly 1,400 flight hours turned his chopper around and headed back to South Carolina, passing people waiting for help along the way. As I was actually leaving to go back to get my son, the original chief or, or captain that I spoke to, uh, his crew and, and himself, they, they came back over and said, hey, man, we, we can't tell you to go get the victim. We can't even ask you to go get the victim, but we can't tell you if you come back with the victim, we'll have you a designated landing spot and they, they will, we'll make sure they don't come over here. So there was no flight restriction when you went in? No, no flight restriction when I went in. Uh, it, it went in place 20 or 30 minutes after the confrontation, confrontation with uh, it, it went in place 20 or 30 minutes after the confrontation, confrontation with uh, Mr. You feel like that was coincidental or do you think that that was because of what happened? I don't think it can be coincidental when there has not been one in place the day before doing rescue operations, the night of, the morning of, that took place after our altercation. I, I think there would have never been a uh, TFO put in place had we not had that conversation. Again, I would have... I would have rescued as many people and, until they decided they were going to arrest me. We're up to more than 200 people dead from Hurricane Helene. I'm sure you saw yesterday, DHS says FEMA doesn't have enough money to last hurricane season. What's your reaction to hearing that? Well, they're doing a very bad job. They've given over a billion dollars to illegal migrants that came in, and now they have no money for North Carolina, for Georgia, for South Carolina, and Alabama, Tennessee, and Florida. Uh, I think that's a disgrace. This is a country that's being run by fools it's definitely being run by fools but they got some underhanded plan and i don't know what it is but it's definitely seeming diabolical at this point fema has spoken and what they spoke don't sound good to me at all if i had two words to describe it it would be weird and crazy first thing that they said is that they are expecting another hurricane, just like the one we just had. If that's the first thing that scared people, I don't know what it is, because that hurricane that just came, that shit broke records. And it was only a category four, as they say. Y'all, the second thing is, these fools said they are not prepared for another hurricane. They don't have the funds for another hurricane. Do you know how ridiculous this sounds? So basically, I'm gonna summarize it for y'all in my terms. They are basically saying, when another hurricane hits, since they don't have enough funds for it, people finna be fucked up. They finna be stranded. It's finna be people 
that get unalived. It's finna be people that need rescuing that ain't gonna get the rescue because these fools said they're broke. But this be the shit I do not understand. How the fuck are y'all broke? Like what? We fund all these other organizations, all these other countries, but we can't fund FEMA to help with disasters in our country. Make it make sense, bro. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this damn balloon, though. Like I said, this shit is wild. I don't know why, but I recently did a uh, Google search and it was saying that hurricane seasons um, is typically from August to November. You know, and it starts to peak at like around October, but I don't remember it being this close to Christmas. That, but that's just me. And I, But then again, I never really paid attention to hurricanes. But I find it weird if that hurricane season start starting in these colder months weird please go to work why can't you go to work there is literally physically nothing fucking wrong with you other than you throw yourself on the floor because you won't go to work because this is fucking abusive as shit, and I don't have to fucking deal with this shit. Yeah, that's weird. But this is the generation we living in, and everybody. And the reason why it's like that because everybody is starting to see people make a living off social media, and that is the way that the world is moving. Is moving towards social media. They're gonna pretty much turn every job to fully automated jobs, and nobody's gonna have jobs. That's why I tell people. Get into some type of social media. Create a faceless page. Do something. Because eventually, that's all they're going to be. You're going to have to become creators. You're going to have to use your creative side. But see, work work kind of isolates the creative part of your brain because you have no time to create or be creative because you at work all the time and you focused on work. So now it's crippling people because people are seeing people succeed on social media and they want to do it they don't want to work for a job for rest of their life. but i would never tell nobody to quit their nine to five to do social media i would say leverage it you know save the money and 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 try to find and make time to do social media that's what i say apparently kamala harris's teleprompter went out and this is how she sounded once that happened Remember his number, 32. Today we got 32 days until the election. So 32 days. 32 days. Okay, we got some business to do. We got some business to do. All right. 32 days. And we know we will do it. Now, I can't 100% uh -huh. confirm if the teleprompter went out or not, but this is what people are saying, and she definitely did look like she didn't know what to talk about. And when you saw her sit there with that awkward pause, I'm talking about this pause. So it looked like she was saying, okay, what am I going to say? And if it's true, it really shows you that she's not really thinking for herself. She's kind of mindlessly following that script. Because if she genuinely knew what she was talking about, she could have continued and kind of stayed on track. Just an interesting observation. Well, I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave it here. It's no longer interesting to me because I already knew from the beginning when she didn't know what to say it in that none of her words were genuinely hers. Not hard to see that. But um, to speak about the people, you know, in uh, North Carolina and, uh, you know, East Tennessee. Oh, uh, man, I, I just hope and I pray that they get the help that they need. I wish I had the resources and the funds to help them out, but um, but it's hard. It's hard, but man, you know, shout out to Trump for raising one million dollars, uh, you know, and to 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 help those people out. But it's easy when it's easy to do something like that when you got over a million or billion people following you. You could just tell them, hey, just give a dollar. 
a, a, a dollar per million people is a million dollars. Easy, quick. It's not hard to get a million. He could have probably got more than that. But he understands that the American people pockets are pretty, pretty dry. And, and they can only do so much. But if you can get a million people to send a dollar, that's a million dollars. And that million dollars can go a long way with helping them people with food, you know, temporary shelter and all these different things. But the current administration is acting as if ain't nothing happening. They didn't even step in when the strike happened. And, you know, they got a little temporary fix with that. I didn't even see a reason to even report on that one, but we are headed for some tough times. And and with this talk of another hurricane coming and they saying they're not prepared, the best thing to do is get yourself prepared. Get yourself prepared. That is the best thing and the only thing that we can do. I've always say stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. And that's just what it is. We might not be able to stack up and 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 stockpile like everybody else. You know, I've I've never really lived with this with this apocalyptic mindset all my life. So, but if I did, if I had a, I probably would have been stockpiling a long time ago. But I blame that on how I was raised, and you know, and we never spoke on these type of things in my household growing up. But I'm well informed now. And now that I have my own family, I inform my own family. But with, and it's hard with your children because your children, they get uh, influenced by the things that they see around them in their environment when they're in school. So none of this stuff really matters to them until it actually happens. And when it does actually happen, then your kids are going to be faced with looking at you, the leader of the family, to protect and keep them safe but how is that going to be possible when i've been trying to prepare you too and now i'm the only one that's prepared and ready it's really that 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 type of stuff makes it difficult especially in this world and in this time so all we can do is pray keep our prayers up man and 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 do what we can with the little that we have to prepare you know I don't know what I would do if a major flood come through. I can swim, but I don't know if I can swim against currents like that. And with the way they were saying that their trucks and cars were getting swept away, I don't know what I would do. Roads and stuff collapsing and falling in, I don't know what I would do. We can all talk about all the things we can do to get ready these guns and all this stuff none of that matters when a natural disaster comes in and sweep everything away your guns are no good this is where you got to have pure survival skills i'm definitely not scared but the thing is is i don't know what's going to kick in if something like that happens i don't know because I've taken a lot of training. I have, you know, I I was raised by a survivor. and But I don't know if he prepared me for nothing like this. But, you know what? There I go again. I'm about to rant. I can rant all day, but I won't. But with that being said, like I always say, do what you will with that information. And hey, if you like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload. Hop in the description, follow all of my social medias. And remember, challenge the argument and not the purse.